Okay, welcome to video two in, the, in this series, How to Resolve Shin Splints. Again, just like I said before, specifically we're looking at posterior medial soft tissue pain. Nothing bony here, not, no stress reaction, no stress fracture, no irritation of the periosteum, nothing like that. Can always recommend see a healthcare provider, be evaluated, but these are some simple strategies that hopefully in the meantime, you're waiting for your appointment or it just happened a day or two ago and you wanna get, kind of get a, a step ahead and start to address some things to see if you can clear it up uh, in the next few days or so, this, these are some good strategies to start to incorporate. So in the last video, if you didn't see it, make sure you check it out, the intro video, looking at how to self-assess great toe, ankle, and then also looking at endurance of the calf. Specifically in this video, what we're gonna look at is how to improve, if you found there was a limitation in great toe extension or ankle dorsiflexion, this is going to provide you a few solutions on how to really work on and improve those things. So great toe extension, very simply, we can just sit here and work on passive motion. Again, I always like to start at neutral or reset back to neutral. I'm supporting the foot from this side so the ankle's not moving. And I'm just going to comfortably pull back and extend that toe. Oftentimes what you'll feel is a, a stretching sensation through the back side, through the bottom side of that joint throughout the plantar fascia, that the flexor halysis brevis. If you notice as you do this, again, this is also looking at flexibility of that area and extensibility of that tissue, but if you notice you get a lot of compression on the top side of the foot, this may actually be something you need to mobilize. Um, so always recommend finding a, a trained therapist, chiropractor, PT, uh, athletic trainer, someone who can mobilize that joint if you are feeling some compression through there. But today we're gonna stay simple and just work on extending that great toe trying to increase range of motion. So I can hold this for anywhere from 10, 20, 30 seconds. I can go through repetitions, pulling back, but doing that in a plantar flex position and also a dorsiflex position. Again, nothing I'm trying to crank on, just trying to add some range of motion into that gray toe. Same thing, 10, 20, 30 seconds, holding back and pulling into extension. Some other ways we can do this, again, if we want to use the wall or the floor for assistance, is to just set up here against the wall. Instead of going into your typical calf stretch, if I drop the foot down to so the, the, the bottom of the foot, plantar aspects more flat on the ground, I can, if you can see there, great toe, small toes are extending. I can extend the toes up there. This can obviously now in more of a plantar flex position, just extending the toe, nothing much going on here at the ankle. But then what I also want to do is making sure I'm going into a little bit of dorsiflexion there just because the difference in musculature from the muscles that are intrinsic through the bottom of the foot and some of those flexors that are coming behind the lower leg can looking to see what is actually restricting that great toe. She might feel a big difference from this stretch and eh, I don't really feel that much going on. But then as you go through here, it's like, okay, I'm feeling that right behind. Can, it doesn't feel like the calf, but it's a little deeper down in the calf. That's what you might notice. So again, hopefully in the self-assessment, you looked at both sides. The both sides need to be addressed is only one side. Uh, address that limited side first but that is a very, very simple way to look at improving great toe extension. From there, ankle dorsiflexion. We tested with that half kneeling, again, dorsiflexion test. Two things we wanna do with this one is look at flexibility in the calf, again, specifically from a soft tissue standpoint, muscular standpoint. Can we get the bottom of the foot up on the wall? And then can we straighten and kind of lunge the body towards the wall to stretch out through the, the calf? Again, this one specifically is looking at gastroc, the outermost calf muscle holding that 10, 20, 30 seconds, up to 60 seconds, hold that stretch, depending on how you feel. And then from here, can I bend the knee? As often will you find a lot of people have trouble is from this dorsiflex position, being able to bend the knee. But can we bend into that again to change the stretch to the soleus? Soleus is a little bit deeper down in the calf, that second layer. But again, if you found any Big difference from one side to the other, clearing up that more restricted side first. Uh, if you're restricted on both sides, stretch both sides evenly. Again, knee strength, straight, knee bent. And then from there, go, actually going into, I like the standing version, but going into that, that wall dorsiflexion drill. So from here, kind of keep the heel down and can I lunge the knee forward? What you'll often notice is the standing version, you can get the knee a lot closer to the wall from further away. So don't use that as a false 
um, viewpoint as I'm getting better at this. Make sure you're always going back to the ground every few days, every week, rechecking with a ruler your range of motion. You, okay, you're at two inches before away from the wall. Okay, are you at two and a quarter? You're at two and a half, you're at three. Um, where do you stand? So make sure you always retest with that actual, actual test. Okay, so that's a very simple look on how to improve extension throughout the gray toe and ankle dorsiflexion. And if you're experiencing some kind of shin splint pain, this posterior medial soft tissue pain, that's a good place to start to see, okay, do I actually need to stretch? Is range of motion and flexibility something that is a problem for me? If not, don't necessarily work on these things. I'm gonna show you some strategies in the next video on how to increase the loading capacity, strength and endurance throughout these deep flexors in the calf that if range of motion and flexibility is not a problem, we're not gonna spend time there. We're gonna take this next step, which still works on strengthening throughout a large range of motion, but isn't working on uh, any kind of static stretching or mobility specifically.